and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great GM. Well, as the role-playing sessions keep continuing, next week I'll be doing a review of what went right and what went wrong. Today, though, we are looking at the lesser metas, or metagame means that have come up because of discussions that have happened on this channel. So I've had to uh, write down some names of individuals who raise these minor metas or lesser meta game demons to my attention. And I thought I would share them with you because they really do make sense and they creep up all the time. And I know that I'm guilty of at least one of these on a regular basis. So firstly, a big shout out to um, Nixternal, the Silver Sephiroth and Vicario. I hope I pronounced your names correctly, but there you go. These individuals, as long as uh, along with many of you guys uh, as well, have commented on the metagame things and have said th how you've enjoyed them, how you've appreciated them, how you look at them. And these guys said, well, there's more to it. And the very first one that they raised, and I thoroughly agree with it, is the meta of the monster. Now, you've got a party assembled and you're Paladin is built so well that a group of monsters is just never going to do any kind of damage against the party because the Paladin goes to the front, he uses all of his powers, and logically the monsters should attack the Paladin. But you know that there is a mage at the back who's particularly vulnerable. And that mage has never taken damage because of the Paladin, the Priest, the Druid, the mage is always the one who very sneakily positions themselves in the middle of the party or a position that means that no one can get to them. So suddenly you meta your monsters who should know nothing about these kind of tactics to suddenly come swarming in and focus on the mage. Why? Because you, as the GM, want to punish that mage player because their character never gets wounded. The character's easy to hit, but your monsters can't get there. Unless you meta your monsters to divert the paladin away, pull the priest in that direction, get the druid at the back, and then somehow miraculously swamp that wizard. Now this can also happen in combat, where it might be unintentional, but you just want to hit that one player's character because, well, they just need to be hit. So your monsters stop reacting in an intelligent way or even in a feral way. They stop reacting to what they should be attacking and for reasons known only to you, they rush off and attack the individual that you want to get rid of. A variant on this is where the particular character has got some kind of power over the creatures and so the creatures attack that character continuously. If they don't know that the character's got the weapon or the charm or the power or the controller, it makes it a meta attack. That means you as the GM are using your knowledge to give your monsters knowledge that they shouldn't have. Of course you work around this by having bandits who've assessed the party in previous combats or by traitors who've sold that information. You have to seed that though so that your players know exactly what's going on but if you put it in there then you can use it. But monster metering is bad and it does happen fairly easily. Especially with that obnoxious little player who never takes damage and you just you just want to get it happens don't do it environmental meta is another one an environmental meta is one of my personal pet peeves environmental meta is where you say all right well you've got to cross this desert behind me from over there all the way along to over there that's 10,000 miles or 2,000 miles in that case so, would you please start rolling, because it's going to take you a long time. Oh, you've only got 10 days worth of rations. Well, it's 2,000 miles, so 2,000 miles is going to take you this much time, so you need that much water. So unless you're carrying with you 8,000 litres of water, your characters all die of dehydration. Sorry, this is a role-playing game. Your characters die, you didn't prepare enough. Environmental meta is where you are applying real environmental conditions 
to a fictitious group. When last did you watch a feature film where we've got our heroes rushing off into the sunset through a desert and they're absolutely fine when they get to the other side or there's a slight comedy moment where they're like, water, I need water. You run out of water, you start becoming delirious. You don't wander around with a sore throat asking for water. You start to eat the sand and wonder why your ducks haven't arrived yet. So you can't apply real world meta. Now, before you even start writing your comment, I know what you're going to say. We need to have a certain amount of realism in our environments. Players can't just run up the sides of mountains. Wading through snow takes time. Eating snow doesn't give you water. It uses more than it does and all that kind of wonderful survival stuff. You need to do a balance. Now, meta environment is where you're punishing the players using your knowledge of the environment that the players don't have to punish them. So your players might not have ever wandered through a swamp in the Louisiana bayous. I certainly have never wandered through a swamp in the Louisiana bayous. I have watched episodes of Naked and Afraid and Louisiana Bayous The Next Adventure and Killing Crocs in Louisiana or Alligators in Louisiana Bayou. I've watched videos on the Louisiana Bayous and it's a nasty place filled with very nasty creatures that are trying to kill you all the time. That's fine. One or two encounters sets that up. But 50 encounters because they're traveling 50 miles and every mile you are throwing more encounters at them because that's what the real world says. That's, it's, it's kind of meta applying mechanics to your environment to just be nasty. Here, you're kind of opposite metering, if you like. You're anti-metering, if there's such a term. Here, you're going, yes, well, the swamp would try and bite, sting, eat, or otherwise destroy you. I'm going to lessen that up a little bit. All right, so that's environmental meta. And it's a bit of a gray area, but it is an area where you can punish the players for doing things that, well, maybe was more narrative than actual reality based. Now, environmental meta leads me to real world meta. Now, real world meta is very frustrating for players. Again, we go back to Hollywood feature films, TV series, we even go to books and to stage plays. There is real world in those environments when it's convenient. And when it's not convenient, it's a pressure point on the characters, but it's not a pressure point and then death. Ships sink and they have an undertow factor, and if you haven't cleared the undertow factor, you go down with it. Do we include that in our games? No, we don't, because the players are trying to swim away. They failed a swim check here or there. So you drag them under a little bit, you give them a little bit of damage, and you let them surface again and carry on the swimming. Bitten by some kind of poisonous snake? Well, in real life, you've got 15 minutes before your internal organs turn to ooze. And that's only if you don't get a proper antivenom. You've got a paladin who gets bitten by a snake and he takes 2d4 constitution damage and this and that and he still survives, that's good, he should. Don't push it so, yeah, oh well, this venom is actually deadly, so you've been bitten, you, you're dead, sorry, thanks for playing. So the, the real world meta is where you are applying real world physics, real world mechanics to every situation. Now, here's where the caveat comes in. Real world meta is important, and your characters need to know that if they're crossing a rope bridge, when that bridge snaps, they are going to drop like a stone into the chasm below and die. And I have done videos where I have said I ignore the dice damage, which says, oh, 20d6 is the maximum you can take, and have killed characters for doing so. However, in that exact same demonstration, I said, well, they get a dexterity saving throw to try and catch the rope. They get an acrobatic saving throw to try and catch their friend. They get a leap of faith roll to see if a god intervenes. They get this roll and that roll. In other words, I'm suspending the meta. I'm using the meta game, which would have said, oh, well, he drops like a stone. His drop is immediately, he's got exactly three seconds to react before he's too far away from the bridge. Suspended so that the character can try and save themselves. If they don't, bring it back and kill them. It's as simple as that. So the real world meta, you've got to hold back on at certain times and you've got to push at other times. Now, the game is not about 
one man surviving in the wild. Well, maybe that is your game, but in general, it's four or five people, or three or six or so, you get the point, going around on amazing adventures, which does not include having to drink their own urine out of a skinned rattlesnake so that they can survive three seconds long, so that they can get to some rotting sheep's bladder and eat that because they've run out of food. It doesn't include that unless that's the very specific type of game that you're running. Normally it includes, oh, you're starving by the time you find that little hobbling uh, or halfling hamlet and manage to get some sustenance. So real world meta, put the brakes on it when you need to. And when you do need to use it, temper it a little bit so that the players can still be heroic. This goes for other sh uh, genres as well. In Star Trek, we suspend all kinds of things. In Star Wars, we definitely suspend things. Even in modern day feature films, we suspend a whole bunch of stuff. We don't watch actors drinking hour after hour amounts of water so that they don't dehydrate when they're in a hot environment. Uh, we just don't need that kind of complication. This is about escapism, not realism. Because if it was, just go and play real life. No, no, don't do that. Don't, don't, seriously, don't do that. Do not go and hit your friends with a broadsword. Finally, if we look at player abilities, now this one creeps in all the time. And it's because of an annoying player who's got these great skills, or it's because that there's a player who's just got such overpowered skills that none of the other characters can shine because this character's built so well, or has got enough magical items to do this or that. Whatever the case in point might be is you then go, hmm, well, the paladin is really powerful and all the other non-religious creatures are okay. Right, the paladin loses his powers because the gods cease to exist, because someone killed them. Did the paladin have the option of preventing that from happening? Had you hinted at that at all throughout your campaign? It's the same as wandering into a village and telling the magic user, well, there's an anti-magic shield up everywhere and your magic's no longer useful. Oh, and the dungeon's set inside the middle of it. So you're here for the next couple of sessions and you're just going to have to not be the center of attention for a while. You're going to have to let other people actually play the game. That's not dealing with the problem. That's simply making yourself look like a poor, poor GM because you're having to use some kind of mechanic and some kind of very poor story without any setup and without any preamble to try and defeat a player's character. Do you understand that that means that you as a real human being are trying to prove a point to another real human being by punishing your imaginary people? That's very weird. So the punishment of players' characters for no reason whatsoever, other than you can't figure out how to incorporate them, use them, or you don't like the player, is a bad thing to do because the rest of the players are going, well, if I make a, um, a uh, starship captain and he can only fly starships and stuff, and you just set every adventure on the planet, um, you're just denying me my, my skills, so I might as well not make that type of character, and I might not make that type of character, because if it doesn't suit you, you're just going to deny him as well. So I might as well not make any characters, because whatever I make, you're just going to cut out and, and prevent from, from working. So, yeah, I'll go and play um, computer games or something. Yeah. Don't do the punishment of the player via their character. Punishing characters, denying them specific abilities that only they have, and denying it simply because you know that that will affect them, but the individuals in your world don't, is just bad GMing. So there's an overview of some more lesser metas, if you like. These metas I don't count as being as perhaps as critical as the other ones, simply because the other ones are so far reaching and have such great ramifications. These ones you can do it once or twice, you can slip up, we're all human, it only happens, but you can pull it back, you can save yourself, that orb of magic negation suddenly vanishes, the starship captain suddenly has to fly the ancient starship out of the dungeon that they've been exploring on the planet. You can rectify these lesser metas, if you like. The environment can be punishing and then you realize that you're just doing it because of other reasons and suddenly you can provide relief 
real world physics can be threatening to kill the characters, but then they don't because suddenly there's a ledge or a use these lesser matters as tools. Apply real world physics until you don't need them. Apply environmental matters until you don't need them. Apply monster matters, but justify the monster matters. Don't deny player characters their powers on a whim. Set it up. Preempt it. Let them plan for it so that they know, oh, well, they're going to do this, they're going to do that. Let them do that. I hope this has been helpful. If it has, hit that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. You can join us on Patreon. We've got some wonderful rewards for you guys there. And, um, of course, share us with everybody and leave your comments below on whether you think there are more matters out there that we can explore and unpack and learn how to use to our own advantage. Well, until next time, I wish you and yours happy gaming.